We saw in a previous video how to adapt our character's feet to the terrain, and we did a few tests using the Agent Terrain Adaptation node. But once we get our crowd into the .NET, once we are in the simulation, the process of adding a terrain is a bit different. The first thing we need is, of course, a terrain. Mine is a very simple one. First, I created a grid, and then I added a mountain node to add some deformation. And finally, I closed this chain with a null node. Right now, this terrain is in the OBJ context, but it has nothing to do with the simulation. They are not connected in any way. Before adding the terrain to the simulation, I have to make sure that my agent has the foot locking channels set up in the agent prep node. Here is the left leg and the right leg. I also need this chop network, the network that contains those channels that will tell Houdini when the agent's foot is on the ground and when it's not. If you add a clip to the agent clip node after having generated the foot locking channels, you will see a yellow warning appear in the agent prep node, telling you that certain channels have not been found for a certain clip. And this is because foot locking channels are generated per clip. If we dive into the chop network, we see that every clip has its own foot locking channels. But if we create this chop network and then add a new clip to the agent clip node, we have to press the create footplan chop network button again and this will regenerate or update the foot locking channels for all the clips, including the new one. Let's go now to the .NET, the simulation, and in the crowd solver, if you remember, this is the node that does all the calculations in a simulation. There is a tab called Terrain. Check the enable foot locking box, and now Houdini will take into account those channels I generated and apply them here to the simulation. Right now, Houdini is considering the zero plane as the terrain, the reference grid, this grid that we see all the time in the viewport. If I turn on the show guide geometry, I'll see a bunch of red and green markers appear on my agent's feet. When the foot is on the grid, the marker is red. But when the foot is lifted, when it's not resting on the ground, the markers are green. We'll be able to see it more clearly when we hit play. To add our terrain to the simulation, first we need to turn on this Enable Terrain Projection. I'm also going to turn off the Show Guide Geometry to hide these red and green markers. We've already mentioned a couple of times that a crowd simulation is essentially a particle simulation. Each one of these agents is actually a particle, a point, represented by this piece of geometry. We can see those points by clicking on this icon here on the right side of the viewport. See, there's a blue point below each agent. So what we're going to do with this terrain projection is project or cast or throw those particles so that they fall on the terrain. Let me go to the viewport and set it to show all objects so that we can see the terrain, which is being displayed out here in the OBJ context. Right now, these particles are floating. They are not adapting to our terrain in any way. These here are floating, these others are below the terrain. But as soon as we project them, all these particles will rest on the terrain. We are going to leave the source parameter as SOP, because our terrain is in a geometry node, and in the SOP path, I'll look for my terrain out underscore terrain. Did you see what happened? The particles have been adapted to the geometry of our terrain. Now these particles respect the shape of my terrain. The direction in which we project our agents is controlled by the direction parameter. By default, 
it's set to minus 1 on the y-axis, which means that Houdini will cast them down from wherever they are and as soon as they find the geometry of the terrain, that's where they stay. If for whatever reason, as it happened to us, we have some particles already below the ground, the projection will bring those particles that are below the ground to the closest geometry above them. If we set the direction to zero, our agents will not be projected at all. They will stay on that reference grid. If we project them, for example, on the z-axis, which will be in this direction, we'll see that the agents will stay on the first piece of geometry they found on that axis. Let's set it back to the default value by holding CTRL and middle clicking on the parameter. We can also change the projection mode. Instead of using a direction vector, like this one here, x, y, z, we can use the up attribute. Remember the up is a vector that comes out of our character's head and goes upwards. We'll use this mode whenever we have characters climbing or moving in different planes, for example, ants that go along the ground and then climb up a wall. In our case, we're going to use the direction vector at minus one on the y axis. And finally, the sampling method is how we approach that projection. By default, it's set to particle, and that means that Houdini will project the particle that represents our agent to the terrain. But there is a problem with this method. The particle, the center of the agent, might find a piece of terrain, while the feet might not. So the feet will stay floating. If we change the sampling method to foot, you see what happened? Let me switch to particle again. Let's focus on, for example, this one here. Look at this clause! Setting this parameter to foot, the agent's feet are now resting on the ground. That's because the foot method will use our agent's actual feet to calculate the projection. Not the point that represents the agent, but our character's actual feet. This way, we ensure that their feet are properly planted on the ground. The next step is to configure the terrain adaptation. And at this point, some of you may be wondering, isn't it what we've been doing all this time? Well, there are two different concepts here. On the one hand, we have the terrain projection which is basically placing our agents on top of the geometry of our terrain. That's what we've done so far in this video. The particles are resting on the reference plane, and as soon as we turn on the terrain projection, these particles go up or down until they are placed on the ground. The body remains exactly the same. There is no variation in the legs or in the trunk or anything. And on the other hand, we have the terrain adaptation, which is the process of adapting our agent's legs to the deformations of the terrain. It may sound a bit confusing, I know, so let's make it clear. First, we project our agents onto the terrain, and then we adapt their legs, their bodies, to those deformations of the ground. Without the terrain adaptation, your agent's feet will not be able to rest on the ground completely. In real life, when we climb up a hill, we lean forward to balance our weight. And when we are going down a hill, we lean the trunk backwards. We can control this leaning of the trunk or torso with these parameters here. But first, we have to configure the torso joints of our agent. Go to the agent prep node, which is where we configure the joints of our agent. And so far, we've only configured the lower limbs, the left leg and the right leg. But we also have a torso option. Let's create a torso and configure the hips. This will be the hips joint. The lower back would be the first joint of the back. Switch to the wireframe mode by pressing W. The hips are this joint here, and the next joint 
up in the chain would be this pine. Oh, beautiful. So lower back, the spine joint. Did you see that? Since we are displaying the simulation, as soon as we put the lower back, our agent begins to adapt to these deformations of the terrain. They lean the trunk forwards or backwards. And the last joint is for the head. The torso is done! Now, go back to the simulation. The lean angle per frame parameter controls how many degrees we allow the agent to lean forward or backwards in a single frame. This shouldn't be too high because if we allow them to lean many degrees in a single frame, our agent will move like a robot. I don't know if you can see it, this agent here. Well, that's what happens if the value of this parameter is too high. Set it back to 2 and the leaning of the trunk will be way smoother because now the agents are only allowed to lean 2 degrees per frame. The backward lean is the maximum degrees we can lean the trunk backwards and the forward lean is the same but forwards. The default values will work in most cases. There is another interesting option up here. Adjust hips. If your terrain is very uneven with a lot of ups and downs, your agent's legs may look too stretched because the feet are farther from the hips than they should be. For example, with the hip offset parameter, I can manually push the hips down or up. If you are using a very uneven terrain, it's possible that your character will do something like this. By turning on the adjust hips parameter, Houdini will adjust the position of the hips so that they are always at a good distance, so we don't have to worry about this problem. And the last parameter we are going to see is the knee damping threshold, which in few words is the percentage of extension our legs can have. Look at this agent's leg and see what happens when we change the value. Setting it to 100% means that the legs can be fully extended, completely straight. Setting it to 0% the legs will never be able to extend and will always remain like this, in an eternal squat. <laughs> Man, what a torture! The default value, 95, ensures that the leg can be extended, that it has a natural movement, but without the leg being fully extended and preventing the knee from turning around. If you disable this parameter or set it to 100%, your agent's legs may break and dislocate. Well, that's all you need to know about using terrains in your crowd simulations.